growing up I was taught you go to school, get a good job, go to uni, you, you buy a house but you pay your mortgage off really fast. So if I can take the bank's money at 3%, 4%, whatever percent it is and get a 10%, 15%, 20% return on it, why wouldn't I do that? When I was born, not that I counted, there were 56.4 million people in the UK. And in 2029, the Office of National Statistics reckons that there's gonna be around 70 million. But then when you look at the actual stats, mm. over the last, like, say, 100 years, they've only crashed once. And that's where the banks caused it, 2008, 2009. Average, I think, was 190,000 for a property. You're now looking at about just shy of 300,000 yeah. for that same property. So you wouldn't have lost anything. No. Welcome to Property Investing with Abby. On today's episode, we are talking about interest only versus repayment mortgages. What is the best mortgage you can use right now to build your property portfolio? And I've got a very special guest with me. Hi, Hi. Steve. Hi, Abby. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you for helping me today. My pleasure, as always. A lot of people um, get their knickers in an absolute twist about mortgages. <laughs> yeah. And I get it because prior to being a property investor, I learned about property. It took me about a year and a half to actually do anything. And a big reason for that is I had a lot of fear and doubt about having a mortgage. Because growing up, I was taught you go to school, get a good job, go to uni, you, you buy a house, but you pay your mortgage off really fast. And my mum always used to go, oh, we've only really got five years left on the mortgage. <laughs> so a lot of people have this big and big stigma about mortgages. And I had to recorrect my mindset ready to, to become a property investor. But for those of people that are watching me now going, I still want to pay my mortgage off, what would you say to them? Well, first and foremost, don't. <laughs> but before you do that, make sure you know why, why you're not doing it. So videos like this. So initially, my advice from my parents was, get your mortgage, pay it off as quickly as possible. In yeah. fact, I was making overpayments years ago on my first <laughs> property. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I used to go and I'd save up and every month I'd yeah. pay it off quicker to bring that mortgage term down. Yes. And uh, I cringe a little bit now thinking about <laughs> it, but I didn't know what I didn't know, yeah. as the saying yeah. goes. So yeah. what I do now is keep as much capital and cash available as I can so I can go away and continue to invest elsewhere. When you look at the interest rates being historically low yeah. and the fact that all you're going to save by paying off is that interest rate. Why would you want to save that interest rate when you can get a return on your money elsewhere? So what I want to do, same as you, is scale the property portfolio and in order to do that, it helps to have as much available cash as possible. 100%. And I always think that having a property there with no mortgage on, yes, it might be nice because you don't have to pay your mortgage, but then when, where are you going to get income from? So for me, keeping the mortgage on the property, pulling the cash out, using it to build um, a bigger property portfolio that will give you more money, you actually pay, that's going to pay your mortgage payments every month, isn't it? Yeah, it's all about leverage, isn't it? The whole thing with property is about leverage, the ability to use the bank's money to make you money. So if I can take the bank's money at 3%, 4%, whatever yeah. percent it is, and get yeah. a 10%, 15%, 20% yeah. return on it, why wouldn't I do that? And then what people get confused about is because as they get older, they, they, they think they need to pay their mortgage off because they won't be able to get a, get a mortgage or the bank will only lend you it for so many years. And what people don't realise and what I didn't was if you have them, if you buy the property in a limited company, a limited company doesn't have a life, does it? So you can, at the age of, I don't know, when I live to 105, I'll be able to go and get a new 30 year mortgage out in the limited company. Absolutely, yeah, that's 100% true. It's a, it's a separate legal entity, it doesn't have an age. So we've seen people as young as 12 get a mortgage yeah. using a company and, and yeah. in their 80s, deep into their 80s, yeah. getting mortgages through companies. So what a lot of people don't understand is the difference between interest only mortgages and repayment and what is the difference? So should we start with interest only mortgages? Yeah, absolutely, so interest only is what it says on the tin, I suppose, that you only pay the interest for the yeah. loan. So a mortgage is a loan, isn't it? So yes. if I've got a £400,000 property with a £300,000 mortgage and the interest is 5%, I'm going to test my maths here, um, <laughs> and, and the interest is 5%, then I'm paying that 5% interest, but I'm not taking down the balance of the loan year on year. So it's still 300000 But you have to look at everything, I guess, as a whole, because when you factor in things like inflation, yeah. as we know, that's historically high at the moment, and that's constantly eroding away at the value or the, the, the amount yeah. that 300 is actually worth. Meanwhile, the property is appreciating and going up in value. So I always think of different scenarios. So let's say we've got a pot of a million quid. Yeah. Um, and we take that million pound, we buy a house, and we don't have a mortgage, and we think we've sort of done it all very well because we don't have a mortgage but yeah. conversely we could have that property uh, well we could have 250 grand deposit on four different properties yeah. 
and then all four of those could make us money. So like you said, cash flow, we've leveraged the bank's money, but we've also got four properties going up in value year on year. So four million quid's worth of property going up 10% is much better than one million quid's worth of property going up 10%. So you get leveraged so many different ways. You get the rental return, you get the uh, additional portfolio value, and with the inflation as it is at the moment, the added bonus of um, that debt eroding anyway. Yes. And I laugh because my mum um, said the first house she ever bought was worth £7,000. <laughs> and this is when interest rates were like crazy at like 18%. Wow. But my mum said, you know, it's, it's, it seems scary, but back then 18%, they just made it, made it work. Me and my mum had a look on, um, we looked at house prices around it um, and what it's been sold for recently. And that little £7,000 house that she bought 40, 30 years ago went for about 172000 So it's like, if you're stressing to pay off your mortgage off, I don't think you need to because the amount the, the, the property is going to you know, increase over value, it, it just makes the mortgage tiny. So when you've got an interest only mortgage, yeah, you paid off the interest, you still owe what's left, but on a, on a house that's now worth 172,000, that was seven grand, it, it's nothing. And I tend to say that because I'm gonna keep my portfolio for a long, long time. I might maybe restructure later on, sell a few off, you know, maybe decrease how much I am leveraged on it. Because mm. that's what property investors say, you know, you look at all your mortgages and you see what loan to value you are. And you know, I think suppose a sweet spot 60, 70% say, so you might wanna, something that's gone up in value over the next five years, you might wanna sell, sort out some of the debt maybe, but you don't really need to panic because house prices double every 10 years. And then people talk about property crashes, don't they? And it does make me laugh. But, and I was the same because when you don't know what you don't know. So I was like, oh my God, house prices crash all the time. Our house prices are gonna crash. But then when you look at the actual stats, mm. over the last like say 100 years, they've only crashed once. And that's where the banks caused it, 2008, 2009. And then you look at the property price going up in value, doubling every 10 years. It really makes me wonder why, why we are so stressed as a, as a nation of paying down the mortgage. I think a lot of that comes from the media, doesn't it? So I think they control the emotions of the general public. And if you're mm. getting your information about property investing from people that aren't qualified property yeah. investors, but they're set up there to make money from selling newspapers. And how do they do that? We all know they tap into that two million year old uh, prehistoric brain that we've got that's hardwired to look out for threats. And so if they say something that scares us, yeah. we're gonna buy their paper. So let's make it as extreme and uh, and forget the truth, let's get people to buy the paper. I think Mark Twain said, if you don't read the paper, you're uninformed, but if you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. And I think that's the way it is a lot of the time with a lot of property experts. What I would recommend for people is just get data from real hard yeah. sources, you know. Look at what the houses market doing, and you touched on such a good point that historically property's always gone up, averaging 7% year on year. So sure, you might have a year when it decreases 5%, but you've got to take a long view. Yes. Of property you're not here yeah. to to be in and out within a year but if you take a longer view you mentioned 2008 if you'd have bought just after or during the crash of two bad crash of 2008 and you had that property now that average i think was 190,000 for a property you're now looking at about just shy of 300,000 yeah. for that same property so you wouldn't have lost anything no if you did it in the right way so the only time people lose is if they don't know what they're doing and they're forced to sell yeah. because they haven't had the right education haven't had the right support and they've made bad decisions so yeah. as long as you know what you're doing you're always going to be fine and the loan doesn't go up so it's interest only it stays the same and like you said the property yeah. value increases so now it's relatively smaller and smaller and smaller and inflation mm -hmm. makes it smaller and smaller and smaller as well and later on you can make your decisions do i want to drop my gear in do i want to pay you something after or sell something or keep the cash flow, what do you want to do, you know? So it gives you options and unfortunately if we're driven by fear and doubt, then we're not going to get where we want to go. No. I think that's so right of you to say it and point it out like that. So interest only is where you just pay down the interest but you still own the loan amount. And the bank's okay with that because the loan amount secured on the asset and it's called a first charge, isn't it? Yeah. And the it's just that, that point in time, the bank's okay with it. If I go into the bank and I say, well, I've got 50 grand and I want to borrow 150 to invest in shares, they're going to laugh me out of the bank. Or, so <laughs> if I go in and say, I've got 50 grand and I want to borrow 150 to um, borrow against the property, they're going to be perfectly happy because they know that property is the safest houses. Yeah. It's bricks and mortar value. It's also yeah. going to provide a function. And in the UK, we've got that supply and demand, which is constantly pushing the value of those properties up. And before the cameras were rolling, you were talking to me about um, the data you were looking at from KPMG. 
that's right. Shelter. Yeah. So Shelter and KPMG did a study back in 2014, and what they were looking at is what's going to happen to house prices over the next two decades. And yeah. what they said is that they're going to double over 10 years and then double again, making the average price of the property in 2034 just over £900,000. And if you look at that parabolic curve on the chart, you can see that we're pretty much in line with what they're saying was going to happen. Uh, and that's very simply coming down to supply and demand. The government in 2017 said that they need 300,000 houses built every year, and I think they've probably got about half of those done. So again, that supply is lower than it should be. Uh, at the same time, the demand's so high. When I was born, not that I counted, there were 56.4 million people in the UK. And in 2029, the Office of National Statistics reckons that there's going to be around 70 million. So that's an extra... 13.6, I think, if my math serves me well, million people that need somewhere to live. So it really is um, a, a simple economic supply and demand. So it, it, the rest of it, I, I suppose then you've got to look at the interest rates because that's the other thing yes. that people tend yeah. to get worried about and the paper yeah. likes to jump on and, and stir the pot yes. and, and, do, <laughs> and, and get people rolled up about. The Bank of England data is showing the base rate over the last 50 years. The average is, well, do you know how much it averages out over the last 50 years? Oh, I can have a guess, but God, tell me. Uh, uh, <laughs> because I think a lot of people are surprised that it's actually 9%. Yeah. 9% was the average, and that's including, since 2008, the rates were heavily suppressed. Yeah. So, you know, 0 yeah. 0.25, 0 0.7 rates that were yeah. never going to last. No. And people have had it so good for so yeah. long that they forget that the actual average yeah. historical rate is about 9%. Yeah. So 3%, 4%, 5%, these are all quite reasonable interest rates. And what you should be looking at isn't how much the interest rate is. No. It's what your return on your investment is and making sure you're making good, smart property decisions so you're getting a good return on that cash. If you could lend me money at 20% if I'm getting 50% return on it, no problem. So let's hope it doesn't go to 20% because we'll be having a different conversation, mind you. But if we look at those rates and you look at the graph and see how high it was, uh, 1975, 1980, 1990, it's only 2008 it really dropped um, due to what happened in 2008. And then since then, at some point, Anyone who sat back and looked at that chart would have said, of course it's going to go back up slightly uh, and then it's going to stabilise and that's what we're seeing now. It's going back up a bit and then yeah. I think over the next year we're going to stabilise and in yeah. the meantime, people that are proactive and going out and investing are still going to make money. Thank you so much, Steve, for having us. It's been a pleasure to listen to why you invest in property and the knowledge and obviously what you know. And I always say to people, it's, it's, you don't know what you don't know, do you? No, absolutely. And how can they? So it's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. all of that information as well. I really appreciate your time. It's good to see you. Thank you. So that's it on today's Property Investing with Abby. So very quick roundup. Interest only mortgage is when you're only paying the interest back and you don't pay down the loan amount which is secured on the property. Repayment is where you start paying both. I've got this free for you guys. So this is my mentor. This is the guy, Paul Smith, that I learn everything that I know about property that's enabled me to build my portfolio and not worry about the cost of living crisis because I've got enough money coming in. It's this guy that changed my life. Click the link below, download his book and read it. Honestly, it's the best place to get started. And that's from me to you. If you want to find out any more about this, just click the link below and have a look because it really is, you need to know what you're doing in property that's when you should be scared and fearful about doing property. If you know it and you're educated in knowledge, you're gonna do a better job and make yourself more money.